A big part of a company's success is because of its people, because of their skills and ideas, and even how they fit within a company's culture. Hello everyone, my name is Chrissy Ta, and I'm the talent acquisition and people person for LaunchCode. In today's episode of LaunchCast, we're going to talk about education with a purpose and, and a concept called mindset of design. Stay with us. With me today are Margu Pusal and Greg Hart from Inception U, a fantastic organization with the purpose of helping people be the fit for the future by gaining competencies. Also joining us today is our wonderful CEO, Alberio Bathory Frota. Welcome to LaunchCast, everyone. Thank you. Uh, thanks Thank for having you. us. Many of those who are watching are getting their first taste of Inception U's work. Margo, could you please shed more light into what Inception U does? What Inception U does is we get people ready for the future. And there's a couple of aspects to that for us to have in mind. One is that a lot of the future is quite certain and is already here. And so how can they respond to that? An even bigger part is how uncertain the future is and how things are evolving so rapidly. You work in tech, Launch Code is all about tech. And I often point out that this was out of date before I took it out of the box. And so being able to respond to things that we don't even know what they're going to be is a whole skill set and a set of competencies to be able to be really confident in your competence to be able to figure things out. And that's what we do with individuals and that's what we do with organizations. That's pretty cool. What was the, I know we had a conversation before about how this started and the need you guys saw out there. I'd love for you to elaborate that a little bit more. I'm going to have Greg speak to that a little bit first. Um, yeah, so I would say that it originated largely, I mean, it was things that Margo and I had been thinking about, but uh, there was the Rainforest Alberta project, right, in its early stages. There were a lot of conversations about uh, what was missing as the Calgary ecosystem tried to get wound up to, to start engaging in tech-based industry. And the talent piece kept coming up again and again. And so we actually had conversations with some existing institutions about maybe there's some different ways of preparing people. But it was pretty clear that that wasn't going to happen by itself. And so the option, and we were told directly in a couple of cases, if you want to see this happen, you kind of have to make this happen. And so we decided, OK, let's make this happen. And, and we looked at you know, what is really missing here. And what we heard from people was, was things like, well, I can hire people to work as developers in my company, but I also need them to be able to decide when something is good or when something is bad and when it's contributing to the meaning of the project that we're working on. And so for us, that was kind of the historical roots for this project was to say, okay, we can prepare people with competencies, but how do we do this in a way that also brings that really strong, meaningful kind of component to it, the design kind of viewpoint, basically. And what we also heard a lot about is you know, that they can, they'll often come and they know the technical components of things. And how do they actually solve business challenges using code? Like the code wasn't the important part. And also people who can integrate themselves into a company can really embrace the culture, can enhance the culture of a company, that they can communicate and collaborate with a wide variety of people because they want to be able to put someone not only with their colleagues, also well, what is it for someone to be able to engage with the client mm -hmm. and to be able to do that in a way that serves the company and serves our purpose as well. And that they were seeing that that wasn't always happening um, and so we thought well if we take all of these what we refer to as essential skills essential competencies what would it be to take any technical capability that someone needs to build and have it be a single learning experience mm -hmm. so they're really learning how to think differently more effectively how to engage with others in a really effective meaningful way mm -hmm. And uh, maybe I'll jump in a little bit more because mm. something you mentioned was really cool about the core competencies. And, and it reminds me of a conversation we had in the past too, mm -hmm. where you talked about um, how do you find that in the person? How, like, how can you tell that in the beginning? And I'd love for you to expand more on that. That's been a lot of trial and error and a lot of fun, to be honest. Um, and because what we do with our intake for any of our long form programs is we actually do intake for mindset first. Mm -hmm. And so really looking at um, 
Are people curious? And are they willing to be vulnerable? Can they admit, I don't know? And then we like to add on yet. Mm -hmm. And then our role is really to create the conditions for them to go as far and as deep as they can with their learning. And so we do it without giving away the secret sauce. Yeah. We do it in really innovative ways. We do it in ways that applicants might not even realize exactly what we're looking for um, by doing things that are quite reflective of what the learning experience is like. And so we'll have exercises and activities that they're doing with us and with people that are fellow applicants and we're seeing how are they how can they be in a team situation and in an unknown situation such as an intake interview that's pretty cool yeah actually i think one of the things that we find is a, a big challenge is people have gone through the education system and they've been taught i mean it's just baked right in we're looking for the right answer yeah. mm -hmm. and if you give us the wrong answer then that's not good mm -hmm. and yet yeah. the work that we're doing to prepare people for the future doesn't work like that those answers are not abundantly clear and so this is more about asking the right kinds of questions but the challenge that we see that comes with that is that that there's many things that we ask people to do where they don't know all the answers in advance but they're going to discover them through that process yeah. And that's how humans learn anyway. Mm -hmm. But it's hard for people because there's a lot of fear, which is yeah. built around the idea of, well, I don't really want to start working on this thing if I'm not going to get it right the first time. And of course, thing. we're saying, you just need to start. Yeah. You know, getting it wrong is, is a key part of actually getting good at this. But uh, it, because we're, not, we're no longer working in an area where there's this really crisply established knowledge that you're just trying to memorize or whatever. It's completely the opposite of that. But it's a big challenge for us, like in the in the beginning. And even people say, yes, I'm ready, let's go. I'm willing to try it. And then as soon as it's like, oh no, I don't know how to do this. And you're asking me to start doing it. It's something we've, we've yeah. made very central to our program is helping people kind of go through a bit of an unlearning process mm -hmm. as a learning, learning process. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Make them, make them uncomfortable. Yeah. They learn that way. Yeah, and without it being, I, I hear a tagline, be, the, you know, be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Okay, how have we helped people actually do that? When as Greg's saying, we've conditioned people to being rewarded for the right answer, the smart questions. and. Mm -hmm. And now we're just telling them a tagline, be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Okay, well, how can people be that? And what we've found is, again, it's about them discovering their own competence mm -hmm. and then having confidence in their ability that in front of something completely new, they've never even knew this existed before, that they're equipped to figure it out. Mm -hmm. and, and that means that people can then become more comfortable in being uncomfortable. Yeah. And I just want to say that I think it's, you know, very inspiring to be able to provide like programs that allow people to open up in different ways. Can I be successful? And it, there is no one way to do things. And I think we've been so ingrained into we have to do it this way. We have to ensure that, you know, we look a certain way, dress a certain way or else we can't fit in. And I find it very inspiring that Inception U is welcoming to all different types of individuals in the way they think so that they can have success. So it's wonderful that people in the community are, you know, so much uh, a pillar to the success for Inception U. Thank you. Yeah, well, the, it, it makes, and you know what, it, it makes a better experience for each one of those people, mm -hmm. and it makes a better experience for us. And so something we often talk about is every time we deliver a particular piece of content, it's different for us because of the people <laughs> who are in the program, because everything that we do is not you know, Greg shows up and just gives the same lecture over and over again. It's not like that at all. Yeah. It's very interactive. And so every time that I'll take on a piece like a, a systems thinking piece or whatever, it's different every time because of who the people are and the higher the diversity is of the of that group, mm -hmm. the more amazing it is for everybody and for us. So um, yeah, from the beginning, that was a really key part of this for us was to be able to, to embrace that and to bring it out. And we've been I don't know, skillful or lucky. I don't know what in terms of... A little bit of both. <laughs> in terms of uh, being able to have cohorts of people who, who you know, are, are fitting that bill. Because so. yeah. it can look like we don't know what we're doing. And it's the foundation um, with, with our programs, the foundation is going to be the same. Mm -hmm. How it looks is not going to be the same because it's informed by the people in the yeah. room. Mm -hmm. 
So it could look like we don't know exactly what we're doing. What we do say is, well, we do know. We just don't know what we're doing October 12th, yes. right? Like, because you are informing that and it needs to be, um, we talk a lot about how what we do is responsive. Mm -hmm. So whether it's working with individuals in a long form program, whether it's working with organizations on something that's shorter, working with their existing talent, what we're able to do is be responsive to the people in the room as well as to the industry. Mm -hmm. and, and that's by listening deeply and remaining curious ourselves yeah. and not having things preset. So we operate on frameworks and principles that can adapt to the actual conditions we're in as well as to the industries um, and the people that we're working with. Yeah. It's, it's one of the reasons why we've never chased accreditation. Yeah. Mm -hmm because accreditation is, is one of the problems we were trying to solve was the fact that curriculums become very set and very mechanical mm -hmm. and it takes years to change them. But as Margo's saying, it's not unusual for us to flex the program inside of one and two week windows, depending mm -hmm. on who the people are, what kind of projects they're working on and, and, and everything else, which is, is completely necessary to have a lot of success with people who are, who are learning from the perspective of discovering things. It appears that Inception U has that very entrepreneurial type of mindset, you know, mm -hmm. just based on what you said, it is, it's very adaptive and, and you're going after, um, you know, what's what's needed out there, solving a the problem. So it's, it's really cool to see that. Yeah. Well, and we get excited about the problem itself. And that's one of the things that if we look at how do we help people equip themselves to be ready for the future, fall in love with the problem. Yeah. Mm. Now fall in love with that before you even consider any solutions. And again, that is quite an uncomfortable space. We're a solution-oriented species. Mm -hmm. and, and we like to find something to quickly alleviate the point of friction, pain, and so on. And sometimes if we move too quickly without having fallen in love with the problem, we can actually just generate more friction and pain and problem. Mm -hmm. So it's being able to not just fall in love with it and then know I am equipped to actually figure this out. That's really, really helpful. Yeah. And I, I um, can truly love and appreciate that a lot of the frameworks that you were mentioning, for Margot, those individuals can adopt those frameworks into every type of scenarios that they're in, right? And I love that because we're uplifting people in the way they're thinking so that they can have success in all the different types of scenarios that they can go through. And they have, you know, core design thinking principles to allow them to have success in navigating through those. Yeah, and to still be themselves, Yeah. right? So we'll often hear, well, this is a you have it or you don't kind of thing. Well, some people, it's part of their natural core skills that they bring to everything they do. Yeah. And these are things that can be learned mm -hmm. and they can be learned and you can still find your way. How you do it may be different from how someone else does it. Yeah. And it can be equally effective, especially if you're allowing yourself to bring your whole self to this work and to this learning and to be able to do it in your way. Mm -hmm. And we see stats. I mean, these stats appear all the time from different studies and everything. But you know, in the last few weeks, there was one that said, 50% of the people who are working right now will have to reskill in the next three to four years oh, wow. in order to adapt to the rapidly <laughs> changing work <laughs> environment. And then the other one that I saw was that, and again, you know, I guess we take it with a bit of a grain of salt, but by 2030, you know, if we're looking at what the job profiles look like in 2030, 80% of that is basically unknown right now. Mm -hmm. So this is the wow. thing that drives back to this this point of like, how do we prepare people for that? Yeah. So as Margo said, how do I make sure that I have the confidence in my capabilities to adapt yeah. in an environment like that? And that's different than how it's been, you know, yeah. in the mm -hmm. previous 50 years. Yeah. And, and I think that even when we look at, if we look very specifically at people who are learning software development within the, uh, Inception U, well, we can't teach them every language mm -hmm. um, and they're doing full stack development. So it's already a huge challenge to yeah. be able to get this, the, that full experience. Can't teach them every language, but what we can do is we can help them learn a stack and learn the fundamentals underneath it so that when they go and work for whatever company they work for, who's probably not using the exact same stack, mm -hmm. they have the capability to quickly learn using the fundamentals, the stack of that other place. So, I mean, it's got a very sort of proximate value in terms of being able to do that, but then also longer term thinking about the next 10 years of somebody's life, how do they stay confident and prepared?
you know, to deal with whatever's going to come along. Yeah. Wow. It seems that Inception Youth's work is really positively impacting the lives of many. I'd love um, to go through some of the stories, if you can share with us, on how that's individually impacted one's life at coming into the program and then afterwards. Mm. <laughs> well, I think I'd go back to like the very first cohort that we ran, <laughs> which was really interesting because, you know, at that point it was nobody had ever taken this program before. Mm -hmm. It was completely different. They'd never heard of us. They'd never heard no. of us, <laughs> it was, you know, it was, and, 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 and we actually got a lot of applications yeah. to the wow. program. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we went through a pretty rigorous process uh, to kind of go through those and then, you know, found a, a core group of people who were willing to, you know, risk a bunch of their money on our program in order to try and shift their lives. And so everybody in that cohort is kind of interesting to me from that standpoint. But I do remember one in particular who had, you know, it's kind of a classic story. He worked in the oil and gas industry, um, came from a family of people who'd done that for generations, actually. And then, but had been kind of as a hobby in their basement, kind of doing stuff tech related and really wanted to move out of the oil and gas industry and came to us and said basically this is my last shot you know i'm gonna take my money and i'm, I'm putting it down i'm putting it down on you guys to to help me and uh, i really hope we get into the program and uh he didn't even finish the program yeah. he got picked off by somebody you know part way th like three or four months into yeah. the program oh, you know and walked right into a really well-paying position in a, in a you know so yeah. that to, you know that in this in the story of a just transition for alberta's economy for mm -hmm. instance where people yeah. have been in the energy industry creating stories like that that's one that really sticks out for me as being really valuable yeah, and one that, uh, I mean, there are so many, <laughs> so many amazing stories because we have amazing people that walk through our doors and learn with us. Um, one that really stands out for me is someone who, same kind of thing, newer to Canada, was kind of like this was their, their shot at being able to um, bring all of their life experience and have it recognized here as well. Came through our program, realized I don't think I'm going to be a developer and understanding all of it and being able to do it they were working to position themselves into kind of a product a project management kind of role which they did and they were able to move out of you know the subsistence living for them and their family and into a very well-paying job the day after they finished the program awesome. and then we get to hear things like you changed my life and we said well that's lovely to hear. And we created the conditions for you to change your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you did the work and anything that they receive as a result or they obtain or achieve as a result is directly as a result of what they put into themselves through the program. Wow. Amazing. Amazing and inspiring to hear. It's, it's, it really is changing lives and then setting people up for their newfound life that they're building. And that is the coolest thing. When somebody comes back and tells you, you know, hey, wow. you changed my life. And as, as Margo said, I mean, I don't think we really changed their lives, but we created some conditions where they could. Yeah. But I even had somebody last week when we ran the event during Innovation Week who came and we actually supported SATE in some of their programs a couple of years ago, I guess, when mm -hmm. we, were, we were supporting them during COVID. So it was all online. And this guy came to the came to the the workshop we ran last week, and he's like, "Greg, just wanted to meet you. I was in one of those uh, state programs that you guys brought." And he says, "This one thing that you this that you did with us changed everything. I have not seen the world the same way since that. <laughs> wow. I just wanted to come here today to meet you in person <laughs> and tell you that. That's and you know, cool. it's partly terrifying, but it's also, <laughs> but it was you know, it's 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 wonderful to know that we're having that kind of impact mm -hmm. on people." and uh, especially because at the moment it might not have felt great going through some of that stuff but you know to have them come out the other side and say wow that was you know life-changing it's amazing yeah and Alberia, I know we spoke about this um, mm -hmm. numerous times, but the challenge is, is always finding really great talent that, of course, also sees the availability to be their new self, mm -hmm. right? And it's so inspiring to hear programs like Inception U yeah. really allowing people to go through that process. And I find it just so inspiring. It is. And you talk about impact. You guys, you guys have made an impact in this ecosystem, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, we've been here for quite a few years. 
and we saw the what, what the tech environment was like here we saw what it was how hard it was to find talent you know and we have an inception you grad that works for us so yeah. it's it's great <laughs> to see that impact like we you know we really really value what you're bringing to the ecosystem mm -hmm. thank you thank you yeah we appreciate it we're, we're glad that the impact is happening yeah so on that note are you guys thinking of expanding elsewhere <laughs> <laughs> Global domination yeah. is on the agenda. Yeah. <laughs> if you think you're doing something right, it only makes sense that yeah. 7 billion people should benefit from that. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, yes, in, in a couple of different ways. One is that we've been working on a program um, that we're going to make available online that is that can be taken by a lot of different people, and it's actually called Figuring Shit Out. Mm -hmm. And so oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's basically like a 10-week program develop the skills that exactly are implied by the title. Mm -hmm. And uh, we see that there's a great need for that in the world. So that's one way in which we're expanding. And and we have uh, we are looking also at some opportunities geographically uh, where we've been approached both inside Canada but also outside Canada to look at, you know, um, expanding the program, which is exciting, but also exciting. <laughs> 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 and also moving, uh, and this is something that while we tested and iterated all of these learning principles through a long form program to develop new talent, we also have that ability to do that directly with existing talent with organizations and that's where we're really excited to be doing more of that work and just like we're able to be responsive to the learners in the program we're able to be responsive to what organizations need so that it's not any kind of canned learning any kind of canned workshop mm -hmm. and we're big believers that learning shouldn't be an event so how do we equip you to be able to continue the learning within your organizations so that it's not this separate functionality and that you're actually applying what you've learned directly to what's meaningful and relevant in your organization now so that you can continue to do it after that skill building has come like the the program has come to a close mm -hmm. yeah okay. the project-based approach that we use i think opens a lot of up a lot of opportunity to do things in different ways and in different areas mm -hmm. uh, because you know we also believe that learning should be connected to something that's super relevant for you it's not an mm -hmm. abstract process there needs everybody's got things they're trying to figure out everybody's got things they're trying to understand or fix or whatever and we make sure that whether it's the program that we run for people coming in to inception or the stuff we run with companies we always make sure that there are relevant projects that mm -hmm. people are working on that become sort of the, the the lens through which they develop the learning. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, it's been great to have you here and to understand a little bit more on how the education is, you know, best is the best way to generate positive change throughout the community and perhaps the world. Exciting. <laughs> and so, before we close, is there anything else you'd like to share with our audience? I love to hear a few words from you about design and mindset of design, Greg. Yeah. I just love hearing Greg say, talk mm -hmm. about Whoa. <laughs> Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> On the spot. <laughs> yeah, I think it, it's, it's kind of interesting. The word design has become, you know, kind of traveled around a lot in the last 10 years and especially become famous in the context of design thinking. Mm -hmm. And I mean, for us, design, I mean, the, the relatively simple definition that we use for it is it's creating the conditions for success. So if there's something that you need to see happen in the world, design is really the process of creating the conditions for that thing to happen. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it has both strategic components where you kind of step way back from things and look and see what needs to happen. And then it also has a, a bunch of really specialized, detailed, executable components too, like if in the in interface and software, for instance. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, my wife would often talk about the fact that because I inhabit this mindset, she'll say, can we not just go for a walk? Like, <laughs> is it really necessary that we go for a walk that you notice all these things that are happening? So um, that is the design mindset. It's both a blessing and a curse as the saying goes in the sense that once you start to see the world through this lens of are the conditions being created to get the success that we want? Do we really understand the success that we're shooting for? Uh, it changes things, right? And, and, and if you have an army of people 
who can think like that, it really shifts the behavior of an organization or of a society potentially. And so for us, that's why design is such a central component. And it's, and it, it's about creating, as we talked about earlier, meaningfulness and not sort of mechanical, mm -hmm. well, I'm just going to check these boxes and now I'm a designer or whatever. It's, it's, it's about, no, what is that success? What is it really worth? And what are you willing to do to bring together to make sure that it happens? Mm -hmm. So for us, I think that's kind of the core idea of design and hopefully that is helpful, Margo. I really appreciated that answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was yeah, nice. no, they say that, you know, one of the things that we always say here internally too is design is more than just making things look pretty, right? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um, and I love, I absolutely love your, your answer about that and how you can't go for a walk without looking at everything <laughs> from a design lens, yeah. right? Um, it's important. It's a, it's a, it's a uniquely important gift and it's, it's amazing to see that Inception kind of, um, you know, focuses a lot, a lot of that. And maybe for some of our audience, if you want to just talk about some of the, the, the different paths that Inception U does provide um, on the learning uh, basis? Sure. Um, so we've got three main areas. One is design, and then we talk about compass and learn. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll have Greg speak to uh, design, and then we can go over into compass and learn. Yeah, I mean, Inception Design is basically a newer part of the offerings that we have available. So the same kind of, uh, that we were just talking about, the, the same kind of uh, elements that drive the education, the learning components, we also make those available for people who are struggling with those challenges as well. So we can actually do specialized, um, you know, whether it's in organizational design or urban design or whatever it happens to be, it's just applying those principles. So we're offering um, a number of services in that area. And then I think the compass piece is uh, more looking at the full life, yeah, the full talent solution. Yeah, and so that we kind of, we take that more of a systems level approach to um, talent, because if we look simply at the number of people that come out of certified programs and you're only looking at pipeline of new talent and so on, we're still seeing that there's lots of gaps. Yeah that companies are experiencing. So we create custom crash courses. How do you help bridge from, we need newer talent, but we don't have the time for our seniors to help mentor and get people on board. Well, we can create custom solutions for that. We need them to know this additional slice, mm -hmm. and yet we don't have two, three, four, five months, years, whatever it might be for them to learn that. We can create those things. And then the last one is learn, which is whether it's a short form, whether it's long form, um, learning opportunities and learning experiences experiences and experiential learning design for uh, and you got to experience some of that at the tech talent tour how do we make this active and engaging and that learning becomes this active experience um, and relationship building being part of that so that it can be something that really pulls people towards what your purpose is as well yeah yeah Love and that. I mean our our big programs full stack developer program is, is the big one mm -hmm. uh, we also have been experimenting with a full stack designer program which is more oriented towards strategic design right? less about you know very specific design um, components uh, although it includes that as well and then we're also uh, toying with some ideas around around gaming mm -hmm. and and then we're going to start a couple of clubs to one that we've worked with in the past we called wild thinking mm. which is just an opportunity for anybody to come and join and it's like once a week for 75 minutes it's just wild get thinking. wild yeah okay. so it's wow. an cool. opportunity for people to really talk about things yeah. and and stuff they're working on in a context which is very different than what they experience on a daily basis so. yeah wow. thanks for asking yeah it's wonderful. It's always wonderful to hear. So if one were to be interested in joining any of the amazing programs that you provide, where would they be able to find out more information? They can absolutely head to our website, inceptionu.com. We are actually currently taking applications, doing intake for cohort 10 for the full stack developer program, and they'll click the apply now button. And otherwise there's all sorts of information that we've recently added that they can take a look. And if they want to learn more, there's a click button and we're happy to reach out and actually and get in conversation with you and find what you most need. Awesome. So, well, Albert, I hope you enjoyed the conversation as much as I did. Thank I you loved so it, yeah. Thank being you. Part of it all. Thank you, Chrissy, and thank you, our guests, for joining us. It was thank great you. for inviting us. It's wonderful. And thank you so much for watching us. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to this video just so you don't miss any new episodes coming through. 
do follow us on other uh, social media channels for more tech industry related content. Until next time.